Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. In this video, we will be solving the third question of Lead Code Weekly Contest 219. This is a very famous Lead Code question called Stone Game. So there are many parts of this question. This is the part 7. I have already solved few of the parts and I am going to solve the other parts as well. And the link of all these parts will be in the description. So you can go and watch them one by one. For those who are new to the topic of dynamic programming should go to the part 3. There I have explained in detail that how to think in terms of recursion, how to convert it into a top-down DP and then optimize it into a bottom-up dynamic programming. So now let's go and read the problem statement. Alice and Bob take turns playing a game with Alice starting first. There are n stones arranged in a row. On each player's turn, they can remove either the leftmost stone or the rightmost stone from the row and receive the point equal to the sum of the remaining stones. And the winner is the one with the highest score when there is no stones left to remove. Bob found that he will always lose the game, so he decided to minimize the score's difference. Alice's goal is to maximize the difference in the score. So basically they are both playing optimally. Alice is trying to maximize the score that she can get and Bob is trying to minimize the difference. So given an array of integers, stones, represents the value of the ith stone from the left, return the difference in the Alice's and the Bob's score if they both play optimally. And so now let us look at one of the example. So this is the example. These are the five stones. Alice is starting first. So she is going to pick this stone 2. So she is going to eliminate this one the summation that she is going to get will be 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 4 that is equal to 13 so 13 will be added into her account now the array which is left here is 5 3 1 and 4 now this is Bob's turn Bob is going to play optimally as well so that is why he will be picking up 5 now you must be thinking that in order to have more score he should pick 4 because if he is picking 4 then he will be getting 5 plus 3 plus 1 that is equal to 9 and if he is picking 5 then he will be only getting 8 you want to see the outcome if he is picking up uh, if he is picking 4 so if he go and picks up 4 it will be 9 added to his account and the remaining array will be the remaining array will be 5 3 1 then now else can pick 1 if she's picking 1 then 8 will be added into her account and the remaining array will be 5 and 3 now if Bob is picking let us say 3 so 5 will be left so 5 will be added into his account and when Alice is picking 5, nothing will be left. So basically 13 plus 8 is equal to 21 and here it is equal to 14. Now the difference is of 7. But as we saw that the difference is of 6. So which step went wrong? So Bob instead of picking 4, he could have picked 5. So let us see what if he's picking 5. Now Bob is picking 5. So 3, 1, 4 will be remaining and the summation will be 8. So 8 will be added into his account. Instead of 9, it will be 8. Let me get rid of uh, the other numbers. Alright. Now, else will be picking 3. So if she is picking 3, then 5 will be added. The remaining array will be 1 and 4. Now Bob is going to pick 1 so 4 will be added and 4 will be remaining. Now Alice will be picking 4 and nothing will be added. So here the summation is 13 plus 5 it is 18 and here the summation is 12 and the difference is 6. So Bob is able to minimize the difference. So that is why we cannot go greedy in this problem. We have to think in terms of brute force or we have to explore both the opportunities. One is to pick up number from the left and one is to pick up number from the right. So we have to explore both of them. 
Now we can see how this problem is recursive in nature. Alright. So let us say there's L is starting first. There's zero index, this is the index four. L is starting first. There's a function f. So f is a function which is going to return us the answer. Let us just assume that it is a function that is simply going to return us the answer. The logic of f we are going to think later, but as of now, let us just think that f is just a magical function which is going to return us the answer if, if we are passing the array. And array we are passing in terms of the starting point and the end point. So starting is zero index and the end is four. Now let us try to write the logic of f. So basically it is Alice's turn first. So f is going to return the difference. So basically f of zero comma four. It will be maximum of two options. The first option is to pick the number five. The second option is to pick the number four. So if the number five is being picked, the summation will be, it will be three plus one, that is four, eight and 10. It will be 10 minus the same function, starting from the index one, because we already picked five, till the index four. Why minus? Because now it is Bob's turn. And now this F denotes Bob's turn. Now this F denotes that Bob is going to pick and this will be his turn. But the logic is going to remain same. That is why we are using the same function F. So this is the first option. The second option is to pick the number two. And by picking that, we will have 13 as the summation minus F of zero, because uh, we are starting from here till the index three, zero comma three. This one denotes Bob's turn. Now again, we can further explore this f, f of 1 comma 4. Now this will also be maximum of two options. The first option is, the first option is to pick up the number 3. The second option is to pick up the number 2. So it is also going to have two options. So if you are picking from the left, it will be some summation s1 minus same function f of 2 comma 4. And if you are picking from the right, it will be some summation s minus f of 1 comma 3. Now this one is denoting Alice's turn. So that is how we can think in terms of recursion. So if you are still not able to understand, I would suggest you to go to the part 3 of this. The link will be in the description. Go through the entire process, how to think in terms of recursion and then how to optimize it in terms of dynamic programming. And then come back to the same problem. So now we will code this and we will try to make things more clear while coding this. Let us create the function f that we were talking about. Let's name this function as help. We will have two indices as we discussed. The i and j denoting the starting and end of the vector. This is the vector s stones. And s dot size. Now, obviously, if i is greater than j, then we simply have to return 0. Otherwise, we will have two options as we discussed. So, return the maximum of these two options. The first option is the summation. Uh, if we are picking from i, then it will be the summation from i plus 1 till j. So we'll have to get the summation and taking the summation from i to j, it is going to take big O of n. So why should we do that? Instead of that, we can simply keep a prefix sum array. So what a prefix sum array is, basically it is going to have the summation like this. So the first index will be five, then it will be five plus three, eight, then it will be five plus three plus one, that is nine, then five plus three plus one plus four, that will be 13 and then 15 finally. So here if we want to find the summation starting from this index till this index, we won't have to iterate from here till here. We will simply subtract, uh, we will simply subtract from this position the i minus 1th position. So it will be 13 minus 5, that is 8. Here the summation is 8. So that is what a prefix sum array is. So we can keep that, creating a vector of size n plus 1 for simplicity, I'm taking this as n plus 1 and let us denote it as p, prefix sum. For int i is equal to 0, i is smaller than n, i plus plus. p of i plus 1 
is equal to P of I plus S of I. So now we have the prefix sum ready and we are going to pass this as well. Vector of int P. Now here we can have the first option we are picking from the left. So picking from the left one, we will have the summation from index i plus 1 till the index j. So that will be P of j plus 1. That is how we defined P uh, starting from the index 1. Minus P of i plus 1. Now minus the same function f or the help from i plus 1 comma j and passing s and p. This is the first option. The second option is to pick from the right side and that will give us j till j starting from i till j minus 1 that will be p of j minus p of i. So these are the two options that we have. Let us try to call this function 0, n, s and p. There's some compilation error because we forgot to add a comma. Alright, uh, we have to do one more thing. Here we have to subtract that minus help of starting from i till g minus 1 s and p p of n plus 1 vector of int p okay runtime error so we have to pass the index so it will be n minus 1 let us run this we are getting correct answer and when we try to submit this, we will be getting time limit exceeded. The reason is this is an exponential solution. If you draw the recursion tree for this, you will find that it is exponential time solution and you can simply optimize this because when you will draw the recursion tree, as we have done in the part 3 of stone game, you will see that there is a lot of repetition here. So that could be memoized. For that we will be using a DP array and as the constraints are given as 1000, we will be creating a 2D array of 1000, 1000. Why? Because the state of a DP can be defined using i and j and both the ranges of i and j could be from 0 to 1000. So now let us mem set this, initializing this with minus 1. If DP of i, comma j is not equal to minus 1, then simply return dp of i comma j because it is already computed otherwise store this let us run this and then submit now it should get accepted yes the space complexity is n square when we consider n as the size of the array and the time complexity is going to be n square as well so this is it for the solution it would be a really good practice if you solve all the part of stone game starting from 1 till 7 in future if we are going to add more parts we will upload the solution to those as well till then watch the parts from 1 till 7 thank you